Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ahabbat fillah continuing on in our family sessions of hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that have that relate to uh, purification and salat an abi huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam la yaqbal Allah salata ahadikum hat idha ahdatha hatta yatawaddu the Prophet ﷺ said in Bukhari and Muslim, in the hadith of Abi Huraira, anhu, he said, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, uh, salata ahdukum, that Allah does not accept the prayer of any one of you uh, if he has a hadith. A hadith meaning that he passes gas, he urinates, uh, akramakum Allah, uh, uh, until he makes wudu. Okay, and we, we talked about this hadith in the last sitting. Uh, and it just shows us one, one of the benefits of this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is it shows us that our deeds, uh, that deeds are, are two types, maqbul wa mardud. That deeds are either accepted or they're not accepted. So that means not everyone who does deeds has it accepted. If you pray without wudu, is your deed, is your pray, prayer uh, accepted? What if you pray 200 rakat, raka? Not accepted. Exactly. So it doesn't matter just your intention because two conditions have to be in place to have our deeds accepted in Islam by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are they? That, okay, you have sincere intention, yes. And it, huh? Following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, barakallah fiqh, exactly. This is for all conditions. If you're going to make hajj, if you're going to make salat, if you're going to make zakat, you're going to pay zakat, you're going to do anything, you have to have sincerity to Allah, that it's an act of worship to Allah, and it has to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's how you get it accepted. So in this situation, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us and commanded us to have purity. He made wudu before praying so we have to make wudu before praying it's not sufficient just to have your good intention and then pray you have to do it as the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam did it so that is from the deeds that are makbul that are accepted accepted deeds those are accepted deeds uh another benefit of this hadith this hadith shows us an obligation to make tahara that you have to be in a state of purity in order to pray uh, another benefit, uh, that tahara is a condition for the soundness of your prayer. And it is an obligation, regardless of whether it is uh, extra prayer, any salat, whether it's the waj, or the fard or nafla. That any prayer uh, uh, requires that you have to have tahara. Another benefit of this hadith as this hadith shows us uh, that al-hadith, uh, which means al-kharij uh, min sabilain. Al-hadith, what is referred to here, that, that al-hadith, it breaks your, violates your, your wudu. Okay? And al-hadith is anything that goes from the two private parts. That's called a hadith in Arabic. Okay? As a, as a, as, an, as a sharia term anything that goes from the two paths the two paths Allah, is the front and the back your private parts Okay, anything that comes out of there blood, pus urine, boo boo whatever it is gas or air Allah, it breaks your wudu it invalidates your Prayer, your your your, pure, your purity, and so it could either be the major hadith or the minor hadith. And I think we may have talked about this before. I think we have the the major hadith. Anyways, those things which require ghusl, that you have to take a shower. Okay, so that means akramakumullah. That means fluid that comes from arousal in a wet dream or in a uh, you know whatever. Okay. So that is the major hadith. Also major hadith for women is their, their menstrual bleeding. Okay, menses and uh, postpartum ble bleeding after having a baby. Okay, 
So all of that is considered the major hadith. So hadith is broken into two types. طيب, in the next hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا توضع أحدكم فليجل في أنفه ما أن ثم لا يستنتر ومن يستجمر فليطر وإذا استيقظ أحدكم من نومه فليغسل يده قبل أن يدخلهما يدخلها في الإناء ثلاثا فإن أحدكم لا يدري أين باتت يده وفي لفظ لمسلم فليستنشق بالمنخريه من الماء the Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, a hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that if one of you uh, wants to make wudu, then he should put water in his nose and blow it out. Okay? He said make istinshaq and istinthar. Istinthar meaning to blow it out. Okay? So if one of you makes the wudu, wants to make wudu, he needs to take water in his nose and blow it out. And whoever makes istijmar, they should do it in witter. Witter means an odd number. Istijmar means that they are using stones or something which is in the place of stones to clean their private parts after using the bathroom at Karamak Mawah. Okay, we're going to talk about this a little more in detail in a couple of the hadith. Uh, so if one of you wakes up, so when you wake up in the morning, and especially because during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and in certain places or whatever the situation, people may be limited in water, and they would take their hands, you know, they didn't have a running water, a faucet, okay? So they would have maybe a bucket or a container, and they would, uh, when they make wudu, they would maybe dip into it, dip into the water. So if, so the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا stake the أَحَدَكُمْ فِنَوْمِهِ If one of you, مِنْ uh, If one of you wakes up from their sleep, then they should wash their hands three times. And then he gave us the illa. He gave us the reason why. Because you ask why. He says, for, for, in the for verily one of you doesn't know where his hands were when he was asleep. So when you're really in a state of sleep, you don't know where your hands were at night. You know, if you touched your private part, got a little something, whatever the case may be. So this is why it is mashru, uh, as the Prophet ﷺ said, to wash your hands first, you know, uh, as and and especially when waking up, that you should wash your hands. Okay, so it's, uh, from this hadith, there are many benefits. Uh, from the benefits of this hadith, is it shows us the obligation to make istinshak or istinthar fiwudu that you should take water in your nose and blow it out. Okay, and so this is those scholars that say that it's an obligation based on this hadith. That you should take water with your right hand and blow it out with your left. Okay? And they say that that is an obligation. Okay? And this is one of the evidences because the Prophet ﷺ ordered you to do that. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the mashru'iyat al istijmar, that it is legislated to make istijmar, to clean yourself with stones. And as we mentioned before, that you can clean yourself with toilet paper and other, you can use other items instead of thone, stones. So when I'm out hiking, because I never take toilet paper with me, but I use nature. If I have to, go to the restroom and, you know, it's more than just the basic <laughs> urine then I will use, I will try to find my stones and make istijmar. That is mishroor. And uh, if you don't have rocks, then you can't find rocks. Sometimes, someplace I've been, you might not find rocks. So you might have to use leaves, okay? Or whatever you can, That's but it has to be clean and it cannot be animal roth, animal, dried animal boo-boo, you can't use, okay? You can't use that you can't use anything that's nudges or anything and you should be careful with the stones you use type 
another benefit of this hadith, as far as your istijmar, you know, using the rocks, comes from the word hajr, hajr istijmar, seeking to use the hajr for, uh, for purification. That it must be witter, as the Prophet ﷺ said. He commanded, he said, you must make witter. Witter, akramakum, it means, uh, it means uh, what did we say witter is? An odd number. Witter is odd number. Okay? You, that means at a minimum, when you are using, uh, if you're using toilet paper. So if you go to the bathroom and you use wet toilet paper, a lot of people use wet toilet paper. Or they might use dry toilet paper and then water. Okay? There's many different ways you can make a stinja to clean yourself. The best, the ulama mentioned, is to use water and stones. Or water and toilet paper. You know, water and whatever uh, goes uh, that is um, in the place of using stones. So it's good to use both. That's the best. If not, then water. If not, you can make istijmar. Okay? But you can do any of them. They're all okay. The main thing is to purify yourself, you know, uh, you know, to make istinja or istijmar. Istijmar must be witr, so it must be an odd number. And the minimal of the odd number is three, meaning you can't use one stone. You can't use the restroom and then use just one stone to clean yourself. You need to use a minimum of three stones. And then if you and if three stones is not enough, you use five. If five is not enough, you use seven. If seven is not enough, use nine, okay? So you should always try to end on witter, an odd number. Um, those are the main benefits of that hadith. Let's go over one last quick hadith. An Abi Urayrata radiallahu ta'ala anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, la yibulunna ahdakum fil ma'iyya daim, aladhi la yajri, thumma la yaktasal min fi. Wali Muslim, la yaktasal ahdakum fil ma'iyya daim, wa huwa junub. Uh, in this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these ahadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, one of you should not urinate uh, in stagnant water, meaning water, and then he defined what stagnant water. We know stagnant, you know, but in Arabic it says ma adaim. So then he, yufessar, he explains what does ma adaim mean. He said, one of you should not urinate in stagnant water, and then he says, Alladhi la yajri, water that doesn't move. That's how we know it's stagnant. Ma adain. So it's water that doesn't move. Thuma yagtasil min. Thuma yagtasil fi. Then make ghusl from it. So that means if you're out hiking, or whatever the case may be. And most of the time you're not going to be in a situation like this, but maybe. But if you have stagnant water, you're in a small lake or, or whatever. A lake. Lakes... A lot of times, or it's a stagnant area anyway. The water's not moving. You should not urinate in it, number one. Number two, you should not urinate in it and take a ghusl in it. And the reason being, the illa, is so that you don't get impurities on you, okay? And that you don't make that difficult for anyone else. In the next hadith, لا يقتصر أعدكم في الماية دائم وهو جنوب. And uh, so this other, in the narration of Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, one of you should not make ghusl in stagnant water when he is junub. Okay? When he's in a state of ritual impurity. <clears throat> so, uh, these ahadith, they show that uh, it's a few things. First, that it's impermissible to urinate in stagnant water. You know, because people might benefit from that. Okay, and so the ulama say that it's permissible in running water. Al afdal, the better is to not urinate in the water anyway, the streams, whatever, because you know it, uh, because of the negative effects of it, of course. Um, and another benefit of this hadith is that it is impermissible to urinate in stagnant water and make a ghusl from it. Okay, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is for the various reasons, you could get sick and you have the impurities on you. So you would you could potentially be washing in Najasa. Okay? So this is why 
this is uh, impermissible. Um, Imam Fulzan mentions, you know, about a different, uh, or Imam uh, Imam Barak mentions, half of the Allah Ta'ala, he mentions about the impermissibility of washing when you're junub in stagnant water. And he says, because it, of course, can, you know, the impurities that you are, it can spoil your tahara. And he mentions about uh, that water, uh, that water, st that stagnant, that water that is used like this should not be used, uh, cannot remove the janaba. He said this is an issue. He said, but a sahih, the correct, is that it's permissible. It's not ma ma fil rafa al hadith la yusalabhu tuhuriya. That using used water that has been used for wudu, okay, uh, to remove to remove uh, to rafa al hadith to remove the impurities. Okay, if it's it's water that was used for wudu and you caught the water in a bucket, that this does not make it impure, but it's impure if it actually gets najasa in it. Okay, if it's actually if there's najasa, there's filth that uh, mixes with it and it changes it. It changes its taste, it changes its its smell, or it change, changes its color from najasa. Then that's impermissible to use. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And those are just some of the Masail from the many. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.